Hi viewers, welcome back to Sahara TV. This is a segment where we like to speak about a very important issue that we have to deal with in uh, various communities in Nigeria. We like to highlight a problem. Uh, very recently, there was a study done at the University College Hospital in Ibadan, Nigeria, where a group of people asked parents to know their perception of child sexual abuse as well as prevention practices in an urban community, especially in southwest Nigeria. Now, about 400 parents were questioned in this study and it's very shocking that about 47 percent of them actually uh, say that child sexual abuse is a myth and that it could never happen to them now of this 47 percent about 20 27 percent of them actually leave their children alone and unsupervised but the good thing is a lot of parents actually uh, uh, agreed that child sexual abuse is a problem that we need to deal with uh, in various communities in Nigeria. Now, to help me in discussing this is uh, a Nigerian who has actually uh, successfully penned the experiences of some children in a novel, uh, some of the sexual abuse that these children have been through, uh, she penned it into a novel. She's actually a Nigerian based in Canada. Yejide Kilanko is actually a therapist by profession in children's mental health at Chiram Kent Children's uh, Services in Canada. Canada. She wrote her first novel, which is called Daughters Who Walk This Path, and that's what we will be talking about today. In 2009 was when she wrote that novel, and it was published by Penguin Canada in April of 2012. Now, since then, it's been published in the U.S., in Germany, in Thailand, and it's now a national bestseller in Canada. Uh, please give it up as I welcome Ms. Yejide Kilanko. Uh, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Hadra. Thanks for having me. Sure. Um, let's just start from the beginning. If you can give me like a summary of what the novel is about for the sake of our audience. Okay. So Daughters Who Walk This Path is set in Ibadan, Nigeria, and that's where I was born. Okay. And it follows the story of two cousins, Morenike and Morayo, who both experienced child sexual abuse. And um, we talked about the experiences and how it impacted their lives, and also talked about the importance of having family support and having people who would help you go through a traumatic experience. And it, I wanted the novel to um, show the effect of what can happen when children experience child, child sex abuse and what can also happen when they get support and when they don't get that support. And um, it did end on an hopeful note uh, because it was important to me to show that even for those who've experienced child sexual abuse, they can still be abusive for life afterwards. And so that, in a nutshell, covers what Daughters Who Walk This Path is about. And, you know, I, I kept wondering why you decided to write this book. I mean, I know that you work as a therapist with children. Did that come from, you know, working with children? Have you uh, had experience with children who've been through this before? Yes, I have. In 2009, when I started writing the book, I was working in child protection services. And uh, during the course of my practice, I worked with uh, children who've been sexually abused and their families. And that experience led to a poem. I've always been writing poetry since I was about 12, and it's also been uh, a way I, I try to process my own emotions. And so in 2009, I wrote a poem called Silent Speak, which um, actually is a scene in the book right now. And I was sharing that poem with friends, and I got so much feedback from people who said, oh, you know, we don't, um, this happened to me when I was younger. And so and I do all, those, all of these friends were my Nigerian friends, people back home. Um, that I knew as, uh, as a child. And um, so hearing that feedback from them led me to uh, writing the novel. I see. And you know what I like most about the, the book, what I really like about the book is the fact that it looks as if it's saying that there was like a culture of uh, don't ask, don't tell. Like it was like, like the, the people in the book are trying to protect the image of the family, so to say. Do you mind talking a bit about maybe how the culture is aiding this or how it's uh, dis discouraging it, you know? What's the, uh, what's the role of, the cul of our culture when it comes to children's sexual abuse? I would say a few things I think um, kind of helps it, uh, not promoting to say, but does not help is um, that culture of secrecy where we're taught as children not to speak about things that happen to us, and also the culture of not questioning adults, uh, not questioning things that we're told to do. And so it, uh, that, those, those two things tell, um, kind of create the environment for such things to happen. Um, and also because we open, we're, which is not a bad thing in terms that we open our homes up to our relatives, 
and they come in and we, you know, we all belong to um, large families. Uh, but we need, uh, and those things give access to people who, um, where anybody who wants to abuse a child, they have access to children because they're able to go into the home and nobody's going to question their presence there. So I think those are the things that are part of our culture that in a way um, allows sexual abuse to happen uh, on track. I mean, you know, it, it's a very common culture in Nigeria. Cousins come over to live with you. Or, you know, it's like they always have to have a full house or something, you know. Um, but, I mean, we can't really change that uh, because, you know, it's our culture. Everybody is welcome, you know. But what can we do, you know, as Nigerians to prevent the prevalence of uh, child sexual abuse in this kind of situation? I think it's important to talk to your, ch your children about it. Uh, I know a lot of, uh, when it comes to sex education, uh, we're very um, private people in the sense that we don't want to talk about stuff we're like that. Not conservative. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, how can I discuss that with a child? Um, but I think it's not, it's, you need to give them some information. Um, here, when you're talking to a little child, you will talk about good touch, bad touch. Like, who touches you where? Who, who should touch you in your private area? What are your private areas? And, you, you know, like so when we have those uncles that say, oh, come and sit on my lap. You know, we, have, we all have those uncles that when they come to the house, they're like, oh, you've gone into the picture. And they pull you on their lap. Some things that should not be encouraged. Mm. So you say, oh, you know, like if you see, you say, well, if, if you don't want to sit on uncle's lap, it's very, very okay. Mm. So we need to give children permission to say, I'm sorry, uncle, I don't want to sit on your lap. Or, or give them permission to be able to, and not say, oh, this child has been rude. But we need to have those conversations in little ways, give them as much information as appropriate to their age. But they need, we need to have those conversations because if not, the children have nothing to be able to rely on and say, okay, maybe this is a good thing or this is a bad thing. I so see. I think it's important we have those conversations. And, and uh, just going through like, uh, a, 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 like a small part of the book, I read something like that, you know, like the girl talking with her grandma, you know, opening up and stuff like that. And just what, what you just said about why we need to, you know, um, talk about this, it reminds me when, of when I was young. There's one thing I will always remember, my mom used to tell me, don't sit on the guy's lap, you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't sit on their laps, you know. I, I always remember that. So, yes, it's very important to teach our children these things. Now, having worked with children for all these years, you know, I'm just wondering if you can tell from your experience how this thing affects children, like if they've been sexually abused, uh, what are the, you know, side effects? Yeah, some children, uh, it causes anxiety because, you know, that uncertainty of not knowing what's going on. Because for those children who have not disclosed, um, to parents, what happens to them? Some people become depressed. Um, there are those who uh, become suicidal. They start having suicidal ideations or even attempt to commit uh, suicide. Uh, uh, and, and it's not something that is just even restricted to when they're children. For some people, the emotions and the side effects become uh, visible when they become teenagers. They're going through puberty or they're even young women, so they're showing promiscuous behavior because they've been sexualized at a very young age. And for them, for those who've been sexualized when they were um, sexual abuse when they were young, so what they understand as normal sexual behavior is abuse. Mm. And so they don't have a norm to go on from to say what is the right way. This is you know, yes, and for those who experience guilt, because after some time they, their body has a physical response to the abuse, they like it. They don't like their, so their body is responding to the abuse when they are being, you know, um, when they when it's happening. But it doesn't mean that they like it. And so people, they, they, they actually struggle with the guilt, thinking, well, if my body is responding to this person's touch, then that means I must like it. I see. Um, so, and all this, you know, people can find all, all this in the book, right, in one way or the other. Like, you, you sort of, you had a lot of parables. You have a lot of parables in, in the book, I, I should say. And, you know, I'm just wondering people's reaction. And, you know, since the book came out, what are some of the responses that you've been getting? Um, I, the response, because it was first published in Canada, uh, the response has been awesome. Um, a lot of people have uh, gotten back to me and saying how much it helped them to see that, you know what, it's not my fault. Uh, because there's also that gist of maybe there was something I did, maybe there was something I wore, maybe there was something I did to invite that abuse, because we always blame the victims most of the time. Um, so the response has been uh, very, very awesome. It was published in Germany and the U.S. and Thailand this year. I'm hopeful that um, it will be published in Nigeria as well soon. 
And, um, and, and anytime I get an email from people or I talk to people and they tell me, you know, this has helped me, I've, I've been sexually abused and this has helped me to process it. For me, that is my greatest reward. Great. And you're working on your next book, right? Yes. My next book is going to be published by Penguin Canada uh, next spring. Uh, it's set in Nigeria and the U.S. We, we, we don't have a, a title, so we've not settled on the title yet. Uh, but it's, the main focus of the next book is going to be domestic violence. I see. So anyone that is listening and they're interested in getting your book, how can they get the book? Uh, what's, you have a website, right? Yes, I do. It's www.yechidekilanko.com. And um, the book is available on Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, um, bookstores all over Canada and the U.S and um, the Kindle versions of it. So um, anyone's interested. And I also love to get emails. So on my website, there's a little contact me place where you can email me if you have any questions. And I promise I will get back to you. All right. I mean, I don't know if we are able to put up the website right now, but it's the website is your first name and your last name dot com. So www.yejidekilanko.com. So anyone that is interested in getting a copy of this book, and they can just go on that website and they will find they will find the links to Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and stuff like that. So yeah. thank you so much, Ms. Yejide, for sharing uh, this book with us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Sure. All right. All right, viewers, that has been Yejide Kilanko telling us about her first book, Daughters Who Walk This Path, and it's basically about uh, sexual abuse among children, uh, child sexual abuse in Nigeria, I should say, and the impact on those children, especially as they are growing. And also the culture, also the culture of don't ask and don't tell uh, that is very prevalent when it comes to sexual abuse and what we can do to change this in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have much more to come. <laughs>